Y'all ready? Well, good evening, Atalanta. Hi, how are you guys? Good. How good? Are you? All right. Well, I'm a kind of prehistoric guy. I was here in 1984 when I graduated. So I decided that uh, it's my life work to come back and share with you all just some really groovy things that you can do in your life. But first of all, I want to kind of share with you where I came from. As I stated, I graduated here in 1984, which is, are you guys even born then? No? no? God. But I joined the Air Force. And I spent 24 years in the Air Force, traveling around the world, seeing cool things, and being inspired and growing tremendously from an intellectual perspective. And then, while in the Air Force, what, well, let me back up. When I was in high school, I had no clue. I didn't want to go to college, yada, yada, yada. But while I was in the Air Force, I decided I'd go and get a, a bachelor's degree, and then I ended up with a master's degree. And so I retired after 24 years. And then I had a hip replacement surgery in 2015, and they cut my artery, in which I almost died. So because of that, I feel like my purpose here on this earth is to come and share with whoever I can, whoever will listen, about some of the great things that you can accomplish in your life if you just stay focused and you're decisive in making a decision what you're going to do. Now. There was this great book I read, it's called The Laws of Success. So, in that book, anything that you can fathom you would like to do, it's possible. But you gotta understand, the basis of that book is about you utilizing your brain to create things. You're in, it, you're in the information age right now, and if you were on Facebook and you wanted to say, create a business, you create a business on Facebook, become a multi-millionaire and then you can do whatever you want to do. But if you use Facebook as I want to gossip and I want to talk about people, I want to do this, you miss the point. But there's a great opportunity for you guys. You're young, your minds are clicking and you got all these opportunities right at your fingertips and all you have to do is take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to you at this point and this time in your life. Now, the day we're born, we're all destined to be great. Along the way, we make some choices. And those choices we make dictates whether or not you're going to be an extraordinary person or you're going to be down here on the bottom dragging and poor and begging for something to eat. Those are the differences you have to choose. And you're going to be graduating high school and grade 13 ain't no joke. And that is real life. Real life says, if you don't build a solid foundation while you're here in high school, that solid foundation is, I'm gonna work hard. If I'm a D student, but I worked as hard as I can, I can be successful in life. Real life says, you're gonna get knocked down, but the person who's going to be successful is the person who can pick himself up, and you pick yourself up, and you dust off the fragments, whatever happens, and you keep going. You don't sit there and hold a pity party for 30 years, and then by the time you get done with your pity party, now you've created so much chaos and devastation in your life. There's no way that you can recover. So what I'm offering you today is that you take a proactive approach in your life. While you're sitting here in school, it's important that you work hard. You work hard every single day. It'd be nice to get all A's when you work hard, but if you work hard and get all D's, success will still find you in the adult life in grade 13. Don't be dismayed if you can't hack it in school because when you find out what your true passion is and you that passion catches you, you're going to take off like a rocket and you're going to be successful. So don't get discouraged if you can't. If you study hard and you work hard, but you just can't seem to get it. That's okay. As long as you got that work ethic and you have that vision and you have that dream for your life, you got to have a dream. The dream needs to be something bigger than I just want a car. What's a car? A car means nothing. I want to have a mansion. 
I wanted to be down on the Alabama River, and I want to be able to have at least $300,000 in the bank. Dream big. Don't dream, I just want to leave this school, get me a job and work. What kind of dream is that? Dream big, you guys are young, you got, you're 18 and your life expectancy is 79, 80 years old. You got 60 years to become an extraordinary, great person. If you check off on this path and it doesn't work for you, take off on another one. If that doesn't work, take off on another one. Maybe on the 20th time, you're going to extract gold. But you got to dream big, and you got to believe. If you don't believe, you don't have faith in what you say you want to do, it's just a joke. In school, you can laugh, oh, you're so crazy, you're so crazy, but guess what? If there's any nerds around here, if there's any nerds in here who will just focus on and dedicate it, dedicate it to making good grades, and you're talking about him, and he's continuing down that path he's on because he is focused on his dream. He has a vision for his life, and doesn't matter what any of you say, he's not going to leave his vision alone. He's focused. He knows where he wants to go. He knows in 20 years I'm going to be a doctor, and I'm going to be all right. Now, there's a great thing that happens when you have goals let me back it up when you have a big dream and your big dreams up here you got to set goals to achieve that dream three months six months one year when you graduate set your goal you have to write things down to remind yourself because society is all negative I'm going to talk about you. Be cynical about everything. You write your dreams down. You set your goals to achieve your dreams, and you read them often. Whenever you have a bad day, go home and read your dreams. Read about your goals and how you're going to do it and start working on them right now. Some people will say, well, I'm just a kid. Yeah, but when you hit grade 13, I'm just a kid don't work. And there's one day that separates you from high school and adulthood, and that's the day you graduate. And if you're not ready on the day you graduate, you got a long way to go. Because let me tell you what happens. You graduate high school, you don't know what you want to do, so you go out, you ruin your credit, you do all these things, you go to jail, you become a criminal, you do all this stuff when your dream was to become a multi-millionaire. But life got in the way, and you made some choices in your life that weren't conducive to becoming what you had dreamed over here. Now you're 30, and you're going to get it together, but now you're in such a deep hole, it's going to take you the next 10 years to dig yourself out. Before you know it, you're 40 years old, you haven't lived life at all because you've been struggling and in trouble the entire time. You control your destiny. You are the one. You are the only one who can do it. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter what school you go to. The desire in your heart and the passion in your heart is going to be the thing that's going to lift you to higher ground. Don't be dismayed because you're from a small town, you're from Togaville. I'm from a Togaville. I joined the Air Force, became the top 1% enlisted for it. Couldn't get promoted anymore, so I decided to retire and pursue some business goals. Got 13 rental properties and a wealth of knowledge to share with other people. And my dream, the final leg of my dream, is to come back and share so that you all can grow well. I had a guy yesterday, my mentor, he was like, well, why do you keep going back to your hometown and that's all you want to do? Because that's where my heart is. I believe that if you're exposed to how to become the extraordinary person, the multi-meaner, you will do it. I believe that. That's why I keep coming back. You gotta become a thinking person. There's this guy I listened to on YouTube called Earl Nightingale. Earl Nightingale was like, he was amazed at the rich people and the poor people. Why was there such disparity between the two? So he did an assessment on 25 year olds. He was like, they could read, they were all ambitious to do something great, 
five, when they were in 65, one of them was rich, four were financially set, five were still working, and 54 was depending on someone else to take care of their needs. Why? Because they conformed to what the top society's expectations were of them. They conformed to what society's expectations were of them. Now, and visualize this. Here you are in school, and if you had an opportunity to wear something, people were going to talk about you. Oh, look at those shoes you're wearing. They're, 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 they're bottom line shoes and all this stuff. So what do you do? You go and do what you got to do to get those shoes, get the clothes, get everything, so that you're just like everybody else. You conform. You started in school. So you, go, you finish school, I'm not going to go to school because nobody else is going to college. I'm just going to get a job just like everybody else does. Let me tell you something. God has blessed all of you with a beautiful mind. And you have to use that beautiful mind to create and to begun, begin the journey to where your true, true destiny is. Your true destiny is not to be impoverished and not helping out society. Your true destiny is to have the money you need get the education you need, and live the life you want to live. That's what it's all about. It's not about what I'm wearing and what you think. When you become an adult, trying to follow up, other people becomes a very expensive hobby. Very expensive. Right now, your parents fund all your nice hobbies. You're all in la-la land because your parents can do it. But the day you graduate, if you're not going to college, that ends. Now, what are the benefits of education? You're all probably wondering, should I go to college? Should I go to trades? Well, should I just get a job? If you just get a job, you're going to be relegated to $492 a week. This is the average on the Bureau of Labor Statistics across the United States. But as you know, minimum wage is, what, $7 and some, $8, and that in $320 a week, and that's not including taxes? So. If you want to just go get a job, then go get a job. But you're going to sacrifice a lot. You will make $492 a week, $25,000 a year. If you're a high school graduate with no college, you're going to get $666 a week, $34,000 a year. Now, you got some college or an associate's degree. Now you're starting to look a little better, $757 a week. Now to you all, this seems like it's not a whole lot, it's a whole lot of money, and I can live off of this $492 a week. Let me tell you a secret. My house payment is $1,200. So you decide where you want to live and what you want to pay, but you can't do that with this. That is your whole check. So. It's important for you to have a vision right now at this age, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and when you want to do it. It's very important because if you don't make plans and have a vision and stick with it, you're going to be stuck here in this $492 a week for the rest of your life. When you could be making $1,377 or $71,000 a year if you went to school. Let me tell you. But I tell my kids, the day you graduate, you got a decision to make. Go to school, go to work. Now, if you choose to go to school, now you got four more years to spend your daddy's money. Four more years. Versus struggling with this $492 trying to make things meet, make ends meet. So if you want to live off your parents' dime for four more years, go to college. Go to college, they'll be more than happy to your aunt, your uncle, everybody's gonna be pulling in to give you money. All you gotta do is say, I want. They're gonna be so proud that you're going to school, you get. So that's the secret to getting in their pockets is to go to college. Now, if you choose to go to a vocational school, two years, there is no shame in that game. You go get certified on computers, you go become an electrician, you go become an HVAC guy, you go and get you a skill set. Because the problem lies in the fact that 
unskilled, uneducated labor. There are thousands of people that walked out and said, I know I can make it. When we were in the industrial age, you could go out, get a job, and take care of your family. Now that we're in the information age, things are different. You hear politicians say, oh, we, we got to raise the minimum wage. We got we to do this. We got to do this. Let me tell you something. If they don't raise the minimum wage, then what are you going to do? The secret is you got to create value in yourself. Work on yourself. While you're sitting here, while you're beautiful and well manicured and dressed up, work on this right here. This is the greatest gift that you will ever have, is your brain. Putting knowledge in and growing and getting more experience, more wisdom, it pays off in the end. Don't be afraid. Don't allow how he got his payment mixed up with his apartment. And he's like, that. nobody really cares about me. They just want my money. Well, I'm telling you, anybody would care about your feelings. Nobody care how you feel. They want your money. Can you pay? Yes or no? There's no great answer next week. I, no. Can you pay on the first? Yes or no? And if you can't pay and this is your apartment, I'm going to kick you out. It's just that simple. So when you talk about creating value, you create value in yourself, and now all of a sudden you're in control of your destiny. When you create value in yourself, you become that computer programmer and everybody's looking for you, you go there and you negotiate your wage and your bonus and all that stuff. You drop out of school, you begging for a job. Please, I need, I need work, please. You get your education, become that computer programmer. Where do I want to work? Where do I want to live? How much do I want to make? All that's up to you. You have control of the situation. They need you. You don't need them because 20,000 others want you. I'd rather be a person in demand than someone who's begging. You need to be that person in demand, and you control that. You control it all. Your decisions, your actions dictate everything, the choices you make. You got to make decisions. You got to be decisive. You know, I come here every month, and I was teaching classes every month, just trying to get people there. Oh, I might come. I hopefully I'll come if I can. Let me tell you something. The information that you're hearing is information that is worth millions of dollars, and they won't come. But I'm gonna keep coming back because that is part of my destiny is to give back. But you all need to hear some of these things before you're surprised the day you graduate when they start stinging you just like wasps coming out of a nest. And all you can do is run and, run and scream because grade 13 will punish you and steal all your joy out of your life. Steal it all. Now, you gotta be proactive, as I stated. Leave here, higher education, college, trade school, or just general experience, specialized knowledge. If you react, you leave here, and you think you know everything, and I can get a job making $20 an hour, you're going to be working for $7.75 an hour. Because you have no skills. All you have is high school. Now, we'll bring you in, and if you're smart, we'll give you $8.00. But still, that's okay as long as you live with your mama. And they paying all the bills, you just kind of having fun and maybe pay insurance on your car. But when you become an adult and you start having kids, what is your plan? Everything you do needs to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you don't know where you're going. When you start looking at uh, my plan, if I go here, this is what I expect to happen. It may be altered a little bit. You adjust and continue on. You don't get mad and quit. You don't let temporary defeat become permanent. 
you move on and you keep growing. But things are going to hit you. You're going to have challenges. You know, I, I gave you a list of the jobs that are forecasted to be available between now and 2024. And you guys can look at that. But when you're thinking about college and you're asking what career should I start on, and then college says, if I get a, a nursing degree, if I become a registered nurse, that's like the second highest growth job and you're gonna make $68,000 a year. So what you have to do is look at what's available, what you like, what education is, and then what kind of money do you wanna make? Don't fool yourself like $20,000 is good for you. Because I'm telling you just from life experience that your expenses are gonna go up tremendously as you get older kids show up, responsibility starts hitting you. $20,000 is nothing. Remember, think big. Think big. I want the $80,000, $90,000 a year job. Another one is the blue collar job. A lot of people don't think blue collar jobs are that prosperous. But you can make a lot of money as an HVAC guy, plumber or electrician. So if you don't want to go to four years of college, maybe you should go to T Trenum or John Patterson and get you a two-year degree. They make good money. You know, look, 41000 And then the key thing about getting these blue-collar jobs is once you get good at it, guess what? I start my own business. Once you get good at the job and get the mentality to run a company, you can start your own business and do your own thing. I know a lot of guys that started their own HVAC company and they started small and they grow slowly, but over time, you know, you got a multi-million dollar operation. I got a friend of mine I was in the Air Force with, he was doing air conditioning, he got out, I stayed in, but he started a business in South Carolina and he has a multi-million dollar operation now. Was it easy? No. But anything that's easy is not going to be prosperous because if it's easy, everybody can do it. If you're an unskilled, uneducated laborer, everybody can do that. But if you got skills and you're educated, hey, you separate yourself from the pack. There's 10 million over here and there's 1 million here that are skilled and educated. You have the upper hand. You make that decision by your actions today. The choices you make today, there are consequences in the future. You make great choices today, you live a prosperous life and a happy life later. And that's all up to you. Ain't nothing your mom and daddy can do. Ain't nothing they can do because you got your own brain. You're going to make your own choices because you're grown. When you get grown, then things happen like that. Now, the laws of wealth. Now, if you're going to start work doing anything, your objective ought to be, well, I want to become a multimillionaire. How can I do it? I just want to make ends meet. What kind of sense does that make? You're young. You can become a millionaire by 65 if you invested $20 a month for the rest of your life. But what sense does it make to sell yourself short? Think big. Think big. I want to become a millionaire. How are you going to become a millionaire? Well, the laws of wealth says he that wishes to be the greatest must find a way to serve the many. Now, that was from the Bible. Aaron Lightingale said, our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to our contribution, our service. Now, if you look at the bottom one here, it says, if you help enough people get what they want, then you can get everything you want. So the laws of wealth state, you serve the many. If you serve and you, are, you have a product or whatever that's serving millions, you become the person you want to be. I come all the way here from Mississippi to talk to you guys, I'm trying to serve. Do I know where money's gonna come from? No. 
but I am already a multi-millionaire in my head based on me sharing the knowledge and the wisdom. It is my dream, my purpose in life. And after you almost lose your life, you have a purpose after that. You stay committed to that purpose regardless because you know at the drop of a hat, your time's up. You know, my mentality then was, oh well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this hip replacement, I'll be up tomorrow, I'll be walking around and I'll be home in three days and then what happened? I wake up four days later and I see you and I can't even see. So live the best life you can live today. Every day should be your best day because this is where you belong. Tomorrow is not promised and yesterday is gone. But today you can be the best you that you can possibly be. Now, we got some definitions from Rich Dad Poor Dad. Asset pays you money. Liability costs you money. Earned income is the money you work for. Passive income is your money work for you. Cash flow is the money left over after you pay all the bills. Now, this is where we're going to start talking about money and what you can do to make your money grow and become so much better off in the end. So, you're young. And if you had the option, I know many of you, especially you young men, you would drive this Camaro versus messing around with this old duplex, wouldn't you? You wouldn't? All right, you my man, you my man. But when reality hits you and you're trying to conform and be like everybody else, you're going to want this nice car with some rims on it that spin and the windows tinted and a big booming stereo system. And I'm going to ride down the street with the windows down so everybody can see me. <laughs> that is the objective as a young 17, 18 year old. I want you to see me. And if I have my windows tinted, you can't see me, so I got to let it down. It's hot, but I'm going to turn the air conditioner on. My feet are cool, but I'm looking cool, right? <laughs> so we go out, we buy this car, and now we didn't realize that the insurance was going to be just as much as a car payment. <laughs> and oh, all of a sudden, I can't get rid of it, so it sits in the yard because I only make $492 a week. And all of a sudden, the car payment and the insurance, I ain't got no money for gas. You want to go somewhere, you got to give me $10. You know, I need gas. That's the reality. That's the way life works. When you do things without a plan, when you don't think it all the way through, it looks good on the surface, and I might be able to get a girlfriend with it. But y'all know I got, I'm challenged because I'm ugly anyway, so it doesn't matter that I drive this nice car because I'm staying with me anyway. So I'm going to put my money in this duplex, you know? And here are the numbers. The car is going to cost me 43000 duplex cost me forty eight. Now, look at the difference here. Now, if I'm going to invest in an asset, an asset's going to pay me money, correct? So if I'm going to buy this asset, I'm going to pay a monthly payment of $550 on this duplex. My monthly rent coming in is going to be $1,500, $1,500, because I'm charging $700 because there's two three-bedroom, two-bath apartments connected to this, right? Now... So I'm paying, I'm getting $750, whatever, for this duplex, $1,550 a month. And so because my payment is $550, I'm going to get, in passive income, $1,000 a month to go in my pocket to do what I want to do. Now, when you focus your life and your attention on liabilities, the cars, the nice clothes, the nice shoes, yada, 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 and I'm going to focus on the assets. I'm going to buy the duplex. I'm going to buy the house that's almost falling down for $1,000, and then I'm going to fix it up, and I'm going to get $700 for it. So as you can see, over a year's time, I can get $12,000 cash money in my hand. And let me let me let me refresh, let me tell you guys this. This is not fictitious. 
This is a duplex that I own that I bought for that. These are the numbers that I'm showing you that I have realistically on this property. So don't think I'm sitting here giving you a hypothetical situation. This is real. So if I were to buy the car, $43,000, I'd pay monthly payment, $550. Insurance, I got it modestly at $100, but you're 17 and a Camaro, it's going to be about $300 a month. And I'm going to spend $650 a month or $7,800 a year. I'm spending that. I spend that when I could have gotten this duplex and I could have got $12,000 a month a year and I could have bought the car that later. Are y'all tracking me? Assets versus liabilities. That's very important. If, if you leave this school here with a mindset that I'm going to always look at assets, how can I get more assets? you will live a very, very prosperous life. Assets, assets, assets. That's what you need to know. Now, you got to start the habit of saving. How much time do I have? Okay. The habit of saving. Oh, I don't have enough to save. You have to. This is the beginning of you becoming prosperous. You save, people used to call me cheap. You know, when if you want to go out on a date with Malcolm, he ain't taking you to dinner. Not the old Taco Bell Malcolm, he ain't gonna take you to dinner because that's the way I learned. You know, you need to go in there, or I'll go in there and cook you something. So you come over to the house, I got a $2.50 bag of chicken, I got a can of corn, some rice. Ooh, girl, I know you. Y'all be running over to me. But I'm saying that's the way I operated because it was more important for me to save and invest. Why would I waste my money on trying to impress somebody? I've been divorced twice, so y'all probably know why, right? <laughs> <laughs> but why would I waste all that money paying $30 for a meal and it probably wasn't even that good? Now, if I bring you over to the house to cook your home-cooked meal, then I'm special. So, that didn't last long. I got married again, and I have to go out to dinner now and do all these things. So, uh, I had to change a little bit, but it worked for me in the beginning. But debt clouds your mind. Now, when you have... People calling you all day and all times of night on Sunday in church all the time trying to collect their money. When you don't have mental clarity, you can't have big dreams. All this stuff is going to steal your mental clarity. Mental clarity is the ability to focus and concentrate on what your goals are. What is your vision? What's your dream? And if you can't focus and stay tuned into it, it's going to pass you by. i tell you another thing. you got to become a reader. You're from Otagoville. I'm from Otagoville. My world opened up when I started reading books about people who were successful. Why did I start doing real estate? Because I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Sounds like a great idea. That's what a wisdom is. School can't give you everything. You gotta be intellectually curious. You gotta be curious about why is that person doing so well and I'm not? Why? And you, if you're not intellectually curious, now you're depending on someone else to tell you what to do and how to do it. You know, you're wasting your brain. On one of these slides it says, for every one physically lazy person, there are 1,000 who are mentally lazy. Mentally lazy. I'm not going to make a decision. I'm not going to be decisive in my life. I'm just going to see what happens. By seeing what happens, you get hit in the face with a club, and you always get the last remaining stuff because you didn't make a decision. You weren't the first one there. You decided to wait to see what everybody else is going to do. Be decisive. When I send you an inv invite to come to one of my briefings, be decisive. I will be there, Mr. Ghost, or I can't make it because of this. 
You say, I'm interested on Facebook. What does that mean? I'm interested. So be decisive. There's nothing, and this might be the military in me coming out, but there's nothing that irks me more than an indecisive person. You can't make a decision. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what to do. You're just kind of, ah, whatever. Whatever gets you nowhere. The being decisive and you taking on that opportunity to be different, you taking the chance to come to school with some shoes on that aren't going to be cool, you are the person who's going to do that, and you have to withstand the criticism you're going to get. But in the end, when you make that decision, and this is a part of your dream, in the end, you drive the Camaro, the Lexus, the BMW, you got all of them sitting in your yard because you made the right decision. Now, I mentioned earlier that if you start early, you can become a millionaire by the time you retire. Look at this, at age 20, putting $2 a day, $61 a year, $61 a month, $730 a year, you, became, you can become a millionaire. The secret, discipline. Say you're going to do it, do it consistently every week, every month, every year. Don't let nobody knock you off your game. Don't let them steal your joy away from you. Don't make it a decision every month. Make it automatic. I don't know much about banking yet, but you can get money in your bank from your check and tell your investment company to take my money out every month, every week. I mean, and you got to understand, in the 21st century, back when I was growing up, companies had a retirement plan. Now they have nothing. Now you have to do it. And a lot of people don't realize that I have to save for my retirement. I have to invest for my retirement. So if you don't learn, then what's going to happen to you? You leave your destiny up to Social Security. By the time you guys grow up and get old enough, will it even be there? You know, those are the, you, you, this is why I stress so much you can't turn your destiny over to somebody else. You got to take control of it and you got to put it where you want it. Because nobody else cares about you. They just want your money. Remember that. Now, you can read the rest. As you get older, you put a little more in. But if you wait until you're 30, 40, is it time? Miss Barnes? Yes. Miss Barnes? Yes. Yes. Can I have Makaya Burns in the office for a minute, please? Yes. All right. Thank you. So, the moral of the story is with money, you got to create the habit of saving. You got to always take out 10, 15, 20% and pay yourself before you pay anybody else. Once you do that, you got to invest. You got to invest for your future. If you don't invest and take care of you, who's going to do it? And it's hard for you guys to see beyond two years from now or when you graduate. That's where you're fixated on when you graduate. But the next 60 years of your life, it's very important that you have the discipline to stick with this kind of stuff. Becoming a millionaire is not hard, it's discipline. You having a plan and you sticking with it. So please get your plan together. And one of the things you need to probably work on is what's your life plan? What is your life plan? You know, and, and, and once you create a life plan, and you need to refer back to it occasionally to make sure that you're on track. And then you got to have self-confidence, too, because all the negativity and all the people are going to be, girl, you're stupid for putting all your money on there. Man, why are you doing that? We can go have a good time. I can't go tonight. This $50 is supposed to go to my retirement account. I'm not going tonight. Oh, they're going to talk about your cheap self. Why? But in 40, 50 years, you will have stuck with it. Let me tell you, the feeling you're going to have inside Knowing that you're going to be all right. 
The feeling you have knowing that you have an emergency fund, and we'll talk about that if I get a chance to come back, but you're going to have an emergency fund sitting there with $20,000 in it, and anything that can happen in your life, you can take care of it. Stress, anxiety, all that stuff happens because you don't plan. You just let life happen to you versus you being proactive and taking charge of your life. You're in charge of this. Everything. Another thing on self-confidence. When you get out in the job market and you're doing an interview, if you don't believe in you, why should I believe in you? If you come in, you're like, well, I think I can do it. I think I can. No, I can do it, and you do your research before you even go to the company. These are the things I'm going to do. This is the job you got hired, and this is what I'm going to do to make sure that your company is going to be profitable. Don't be bashful standing back saying, well, I don't know what I want to make. I want to make $100,000, and this is how I want to get paid, and I want this kind of bonus. These are the things I want. And if you tell me no, guess what? I got rental property. I got passive income. I go back to the house and sit down. You need to be in control. When you make good plans and you buy those assets, those assets that are paying you money, you have options now. The reason why I stay in the military is like, well, I'm from Otaville and I saw how hard people worked here. And I saw that you worked so hard, but you don't, can't make ends meet all the time. I watched my mom do it my entire childhood not being able to make ends meet a lot of the time. I didn't want to live like that. So when I joined the military, it's like, well, gosh, at the lowest rate, I'm making more than my mom makes. This is a good deal for me. You got to feed me. You got a room for me to stay in. And hey, this is a good deal for me. People are like, oh, well, the dining hall food sucks. But you know, when you grow up poor, it's like, you got ice cream, you got cake, you got all this stuff in there for me to choose from. And I didn't complain at all. I'd wake up at midnight, go get midnight chow. Because it was, it was there. It was free to me because I had a meal card. So you make those choices yourself. Because not making choice can be devastating to you in your future your kids' future, your grandkids' future. You're creating a legacy. When people say, well, when I die, I don't want to leave my kids nothing. When you die, you want to leave your kids millions of dollars. So they can turn it into billions of dollars and their kids can turn it into trillions of dollars. That's how family legacies are started. Don't spend everything you got because you need a new pair of shoes and you need all this stuff to keep up with the Joneses. You create a legacy, and then you teach your kids as they're growing up, I need you to save this amount. I need you to start looking at mutual funds. You start doing that because you know. You know, and now, mutual funds. Now, if you want to think about a mutual fund, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about investing, but you got a company, General Electric. And their stock is $20 a share. Now, when you get just the General Electric stock, if General Electric falls down to $10, then you lose half your money. Or if it goes up to $30, then you gain $10 a share. So a mutual fund is the mutual fund is the money, is the place where you send your money. And then the mutual fund will take your money and invest it in General Electric, Chevron, Bank of America, you know, Chrysler, all these different companies they'll invest your money into. So the reason why mutual funds are an easy way to go because they have money managers there to take care of your money. So once you get a mutual fund, if, say, Chevron goes out of business where you're mutual fund, you don't lose everything, you lose just a little. But then the other companies eventually will pick it up. So that's a, a mutual fund in a snapshot, is the company you put money in has investment 
that investors that take your money that you send and put it in distributed in several different companies. Ms. Barnes? Yes? Yes, can I have Denisha Bradford in the office for a minute, please? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, oh, I wasn't going to talk that long. Oh, okay. Shoot, I can now if that's okay. <laughs> Give them an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, I will. But anyway, a mutual fund is, you can read up on it, intellectually curious. So pull it up on Google and read up on it. I gave you some notes on it, compounding interest. Look at it like a snowball coming down a mountain, and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the most powerful thing you have to invest right now at 20, compounding interest. This is where your millions come from, right here. This is why you put $20 in and get a million later. And you can read about that. But And this shows you a little graphic uh, uh, representation. If you put $1,200 in this year, you get 10% interest, $120 become $1,320, and then, you know, so on and so forth. That $1,320, get 10% interest, and, you know, it, it just grows, grows, and grows. The more you got in there, the bigger and faster it grows. Compounding interest is the most powerful tool you have at 17, 18 years old. Dividends is the money that once you invest in a company, they pay all their bills and what's left over, that's what they give you. That's dividends in a nutshell. Capital gains and losses. Capital gain is if I buy for $20 and I make $10, I gotta pay taxes on that $10. That's capital gain in a nutshell. Automatic investing is something I alluded to earlier. If I say I can spend $100 a month investing and I keep getting it taken out of my check and invest it, and I, you know, if the price of the share is $20 here, when I start $20, it goes down to 17. If it goes down to 17, then I get more shares. And then it goes down here, it goes down to 10. So when it, when it goes down to 10, I could get 10 shares. But the advantage is the average of everything I bought here, you know, I put twelve hundred in and it finally it went up to twenty-five dollars and I decided I was gonna sell. And so this is my capital gains right here. I had 70 shares, and the average price was $17. And as you can see down there, at $25. I made $1,770, so $570 I made because I was disciplined. I wasn't smarter than anybody, I was disciplined. I said I was going to do it, I started doing it, and I stuck with it. I persisted through all the rough times, and I'm rewarded now. To make money, you, ain't, you don't have to work hard and be out there all times of night. To make money, you just got to be smart and know what to do with your money and where to put it. That is... The key to your success is to invest your money and do it diligently for a long period of time. Not to read all that. So, with that being said, that's going to conclude the, my part. So, who has questions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you go to the? Did you go to the military before you went to college?